Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about dative covalent bonding. So a few notes about this first. It's got another name, it's also called coordinate bonding and it happens when the shared pair of electrons, so it's a type of covalent bonding, it involves a shared pair of electrons, is supplied by only one of the bonding atoms. So normally in a single bond, when two atoms are bonded together, each one donates one electron to that single bond. In this case, one atom supplies both electrons of that pair and the other just takes them and shares them. So these electrons, which end up being a shared pair, is called the dative covalent bond or the coordinate bond. And it's represented by two dots or two crosses because those electrons came from the same bonding atom originally. So those electrons were originally a lone pair of electrons. Now a lone pair is just a pair of electrons on an atom that aren't involved in bonding. And some examples of compounds that have dative covalent bonds include molecules such as carbon monoxide and NH3BF3, ions such as the ammonium and hydronium ion, and Al2Cl6, which is what's known as a dimer, so when two of the same molecule are stuck together. And I'm going to explain a few of these now. So I'm going to start with the two molecules at the top, carbon monoxide and NH3BF3. So in the carbon monoxide example, there's a few key points to note. So you'll need to know when you're drawing dot and cross diagrams for covalent compounds, you need to know how many bonds each atom wants to form ideally. Now carbon always wants to form four bonds, oxygen wants to form two. Therefore, they need to compromise to gain some stability. So they're going to form a triple bond. The next thing we need to do is look at our periodic table. Carbon is in group four and oxygen is in group six. So oxygen's got two more outer electrons compared to the carbon. So we know we have a triple bond. So I'm going to say carbon's the dots, oxygen is the crosses. So dot, cross, dot, cross. Now, carbon's only got four outer electrons and it's not going to have one electron sat by itself. They appear in pairs. So that means the other pair is over here. Now, oxygen's in group six, carbon's in group four. So the oxygen has two more electrons than that carbon. So oxygen can donate a pair for bonding and that there is the dative bond. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six from the oxygen, one, two, three, four from the carbon and how many in the outer shell? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in carbon's outer shell, six, seven, eight in oxygen. So that is the dot and cross of carbon monoxide. Moving on to this compound, it looks quite complicated, but it's made up of two molecules which you might have seen before, ammonia and boron trifluoride. You know that hydrogen wants to form single bonds, so we'll do those single bonds straight away dot cross, dot cross, dot cross. Fluorine does the same, it's from group seven. We'll pop those single bonds in. Now I've made some notes here. Looking at our periodic table, boron is in group three, nitrogen is in group five. So this is a clue that you have dative bonds when you have two atoms bonded together and one is two groups ahead or has two more outer electrons than the other atom. Since boron was in group three, it's used its three outer electrons already in bonding. It's got no more to give. Nitrogen's used three of its five, therefore the rest 
go there. Now let's add up those outer shells of the nitrogen, 2, 4, 6, 8, and of the boron, 2, 4, 6, 8. And we're finished.